Installing and Configuring the Onefinity CNC Tool Setter. First, let's start off by talking about a few of the differences between our EZZ Auto Tool Zero and our Touch Probe. The EZZ Auto Tool Zero sets your Z offset. It is an automated process that will set the tool height above the material. You must have your material loaded for this to work correctly. The Touch Probe sets your X, Y, and Z offsets via a manual process. This manual process will end up with you setting your material location within the workspace relative to your home position. Once you've probed for Z, you can then use the Auto Tool Zero to set your Z offset relative to the material. The Onefinity CNC Elite Series supports an automatic Tool Zero or Auto Tool Setter. This will calculate your Z offset for you between your bit changes so you don't have to reset your Z zero every time. If you want to use your tool changer on your QCW, it will come pre-installed with the mount to secure it using one of the bolts that is already on the QCW on the front tube. If you're not using our QCW, you can remove the two bolts using a 4mm hex key and screw the tool setter directly to the surface of your table using the two included screws. Depending on where you're mounting your tool setter on your table or QCW frame, you may want to flip the wire so that it comes out on the opposite side. Flipping it to the opposite side prevents the wire from being caught in the center of the machining area. You can see here that we just used a 2mm hex key to loosen the bolts holding the bottom on. Then we'll flip the board around and we are now good to go. With that flipped around, we'll plug the tool setter into the port labeled tool setter on the back of the Masso controller. With that plugged in, we can now power the machine on and we're ready to set up our tool changer wherever we want to along the left side or along the front of the machine. You can really place the tool changer anywhere that the wire will reach, but the left side and the front would be the two recommended places. We're going to jog our Z axis so that it hovers exactly over where we want to place our tool setter. This is going to allow us to line up the tool setter with our Z axis as we have it lowered down here. We're going to make sure that we are showing the light on the tool setter. If you place that on the front, you'll want that facing forward. And if you're using it on the left side of your machine, you're going to want to face the light inwards towards the center of the machining area. Here I'm just using an awl to mark where I'm going to place my screws so they won't walk on me. And then after that I'm going to come back with those two included Phillips head screws and we're going to screw our tool setter to the waste board. You'll notice that this is rotated 90 degrees as I mentioned before facing inwards towards the center of the cutting area. This allows us to utilize the tool setter on the left side of our waste board without sacrificing more than that one inch that it takes up. Once that's secured to our table, we'll go to the F3 screen and get our machine's absolute coordinates so we can plug those in for our settings. Next, we can go to the F1 setup screen where we will double tap Auto Tool Zero and it will bring up a box where we will input our settings. We're going to click Enable Auto Tool Zero as well as Enable for the X and Y position. The tool setter X position in my case is going to be zero since I'm on the far left side. And the Y position in this case is 48.3747. Remember, depending on where you place your tool setter, your values will be different as well in the X and Y positions. So make sure that you get the correct absolute coordinates from the F3 screen. Finally, we can scroll down on the center column of the F1 screen to our tool setter, select that by single tapping it and pressing the space bar to set it to low. The tool setter will come with the mount for the QCW pre-installed. We can use any of the bolts along the front tube of our QCW to mount our tool setter to our table. We're just going to remove the bolt, then slide it through the hole on the mount securing our tool setter in place. With our tool setter secured to our QCW frame, we're going to remove the cable tie from the wire and we'll plug this into the back of our Masso controller. Moving to the back of our Masso, on the bottom right corner we'll see three ports labeled Tool Setter, XYZ Probe, and Laser. We'll plug our tool setter into the port labeled Tool Setter, then we'll go back to the front of the machine, turn it on, and I'll show you exactly how to set up the rest of this. First, we will home the machine 
And after that, we are going to jog our machine so that the bit is directly over the tool setter itself. If you're on the QCW, you only need to jog X and Z. If you're on the table, you'll need to use Y as well. With our bit in the correct position, we'll go to our F2 screen and get our absolute coordinates. We'll write these down so that we can use these in just a moment. After we've got our absolute coordinates written down, we'll press the F1 button in the top left, then press enter for the password. And after that, on the left side, in the far left column, we will use the auto tool zero and we'll double tap that. We're going to click enable auto tool zero as well as tool setter X and Y positions are going to be enabled. If you have the tool setter set up on your QCW, you will only need to put a value in for the X position and not the Y. The X position in my case was 10.4189 inches. The Y position is zero since I am on the QCW. If you have it on the table, this will have a value. The Z safe distance to the tool setter, I've got set to negative one. and our feed rate, I'm going to set at 30 inches per minute. Once we've put all of these values in, we will click save and we can go back to the F2 screen and press home. Once we have homed, the machine will go back to the tool setter and set the Z offset. Now we'll run a quick file with multiple tool paths using different bits. Here we're using an eighth inch and a quarter inch down cut. We're going to manually set X and Y zeros since we're using the center of our material. You'll notice we're still using our XYZ probe to probe for our Z axis. Once that's set the first time, the automatic tool zero will do all the work for us. Here we are changing our bit from an eighth inch to a quarter inch end mill. Once we get that tightened in, we'll just put our dust boot back on and you'll see that it will come touch off of our tool zero, even with the dust boot attached. And that completes the Onefinity CNC EZZ tool setter installation and setup.